Well, my next guest made big headlines this week saying a deep recession is coming and it's going to force the Fed the first rate cut. It's going to be 100 basis points. Joining me now, Double Line Capital Deputy CIO Jeffrey Sherman. Jeffrey, you know how to make a splash, my man. Uh, so the, the, the first rate cut, 100 basis points. I think the record is like 50 basis points. They have to botch this thing so bad and be so blind to the mistakes they're making. What will wake them up? Right. Well, the inflation data should wake them up. But I, I, I need to clear the air a little bit here, Charles, too, that I wasn't saying that we're going to have a deep recession. What I did say, though, was that I, I think that the market price saying that we're going to have the steady pace of 25 basis points, uh, 25 basis point cuts is a bit optimistic. And but given the fact that the Fed has been so behind the curve and hiking cycle, still wedded to raising rates at this point in the cycle, even though we're seeing disinflation, uh, we're seeing things today come out. We saw GDP be relatively strong, but uh, what we saw today, the employment cost index come down. We saw kind of incomes be a little bit below uh, expectations. And although we're in this sweet spot in the economy right now, I think the Fed is being too aggressive. And so because they're wedded to these kind of backward looking indicators, things like GDP, things like inflation, things like the labor market, by the time they realize what's happening, because that data lags to the system, that potentially the first cut will be something greater than 50 basis points, as much as 100. And wow. the reason being, it's that lagged variable here in this in this over-engineering this economy today. Let's talk about that lag for a moment. I mean, you know, people always talk about like, you know, Gretzky say you skate to where the puck's going to be. Uh, you know, we know as a, as a great quarterback, you throw to where the receiver is going to go and catch the ball. And the Fed should be able to start to judge that. That seems to be the confusing part. No, no one at the Fed, at least, and it's, it seem, they seem reluctant to even try to guess where the puck's going to be. And to your point, they keep making decisions based on things that have already happened, like in a rearview mirror. Yeah, that's correct. And, and if you think about it, uh, given the fact that they were so wedded to the narrative that in inflation was going to be transitory, and we heard that T word incessantly throughout you know, early 2021, um, now at this stage in the cycle, they don't want to want to stop hiking too soon. And so this is the problem about trying to over-engineer this. But one thing I did hear from Powell this week was that he did say that policy is now restrictive. Uh, they said that they thought it was too restrictive before, but he, he emphasized that point many times during the press conference this week. And so potentially he, he's thinking about the ramifications here, right. but this idea they want to have another hike. And if they want to have another hike, they're going to deliver it irrespective of what's going on in the markets. And so right now the bond market says there's about a 50% of a chance of a hike, but also the bond market says by, June, by January, that hike will be a race. So which one is it? And so if you're gonna hike 25 to cut, you know, roughly 12 weeks later, what's the point anyway? And so at this stage, I don't think it matters, Charles. The, 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 the hikes are in the economy. They're gonna start to translate through. And ultimately it's putting pressure on floating rate assets. And this exists within the bank loan market. It exists within the commercial real estate market, which I know all your guests have talked about the, the trials and tribulations there. But effectively, there are going to be some pain points, and it's just a matter of time. And so, right. again, I'm not saying that the Fed cuts are coming anytime soon. In fact, I think they probably try to hike one more time this year, even though I don't think they should. And I don't think that they're going to try to cut any time until inflation is really under control. So I got a minute to go. Um, I know that you're saying, hey, enjoy the ride while you can as, a, as an equity investor, but have an exit plan. In the meantime, you're buying uh, long, long duration bonds. And to that point, so yesterday, news out of Japan, which is almost over everyone's head, this uh, YCC, this yield cap curve thing, uh, you know, the idea that maybe they would let the yields go up a little bit more, that would suck money out of our treasuries because Japan is the largest holder now. Uh, consequently, our yields will go up. So how confident are you really in, in being maybe overweight bonds at this point? Yeah, I mean, really, let's just look at the price action, Charles. Since the announcement, yeah, you had good economic data yesterday. You had a pretty supporting narrative to you on the inflation front this morning. And guess what happened to bond yields? They rallied today, right? They sold off a bit yesterday. So even on the news, and, and the BOJ said they're willing to let, even though they're going to target a 50 basis point tenure, they're willing to let it to go to 100 before they'll start purchasing. So, um, you know, the, the JGBs, that the tenure got to about 57 basis points today. There was a little bit of kind of sell-off overnight in our market and treasuries, but right. it since rallied a little bit. And so the 10-year is, is really stuck inside of four, 
Uh, maybe it pushes up a little bit, which would actually be another reason to buy a little bit more, again, for this protection. But right now, as I said, I think we're in the sweet spot of the market. You have the slowing inflation. You have a growth that's been above expectations. And in the short term, owning risk is not really a bad thing. But again, it's that exit plan that we're talking about. So we may push up again to the highs on the S&P, the 4,800 or so. Uh, we still like credit in our portfolios. We have not been trimming credit over the course of the summer. But if we see spread tightening there, again, uh, we may want to reenact that plan. So again, we, just like the Fed, Charles, are data dependent at this stage. And <laughs> again, just because prices are higher doesn't mean you should get more bullish. I got you. All right, so ride the wave. You're making a lot of money, but have an exit plan and start to maybe become a little more defensive. Jeffrey, great seeing you, my friend. Thank you. You as well, Charles. Thanks again.